You know, basically she was saying, like, I think this is the Christ. I believe in my heart this is the Christ. You guys need to come and see. Could this be? You know, if this is the Christ, you guys need to get out here and listen to what he's got to say. Jesus said, Jesus told her, I am he. She responded. She encountered Jesus, believed him, and then ran and told everybody back in town about this man. People of the town came out to see. And then we're going to pick up the story there in verse 39. Pick up the story there in verse 39. Right here. I'll read it from the screen. It says, Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I had ever did. Next slide. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. Next slide. And because of his words, many more became believers. They came and they listened to Jesus, and they said, you know what? We believe. Next slide. This is the one. This is, this is the main slide right here. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. This is where I believe our culture has missed it today. And this is the, the lie of Satan that I believe that many of us have missed it on. And we've bought it, hook, line, and sinker, in our culture today. Think about this for a second. Think about if she would have lived in the time we live in today. She would have ran back into town and said, come and see this guy who told me everything I ever did. They would have said, who is this guy? And they, she would have said, Jesus Christ. So more than likely, they would have went into their room, brought up their MySpace account, and found Jesus' MySpace page, right? I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. How many of you guys do that? Okay? Then they would have probably tried to add him as a friend and look at his page, right? I, kn I, know, I know you guys do it because I do it. I do, I've done it before. So then they would have read his page, read all about him, heard that he was the Son of God, you know, heard everything that he said, all the miracles that he had ever performed, and then they would have thought. They probably would have added him as a friend, too, right? Just because they know him, because the woman they knew knew Jesus, so that makes them know Jesus, too. So, you know, the whole networking thing. They would have looked at his page, and then, heaven forbid, they would have said, we know Jesus now, and thought that that was enough, and not went out to hear Jesus for themselves, to where they couldn't say, we believe now, not because of what she said, not because of what's written on his page, but because we have heard for ourselves. We know that he is the Messiah. We have listened to his words. We have accepted who he is. And we know that now he is the Christ. So I ask you a question. Do you know him? Do you know him tonight? And see, I just want to tell you guys, that's the burden that I've been bearing. That's the burden that I've really been bearing for this culture, this South Georgia culture that we live in, is I believe that we're so busy. We have every single Christian resource at our fingertips at any given time. We're the busiest generation, I believe, ever to walk the face of the earth. And somewhere in all of that mix and all of the hustle and bustle and all of the, oh, I got to go to church. Oh, my parents are making me go to church. Or, oh, I'm just trying to live right. I just, I just want to do the right thing. Somewhere in the middle of all that, I believe some of us in here may have missed the point of Jesus' message. Because Jesus never come and said, if you do all these things, then you will be saved. He said, come to me, all who thirst. And I will give you living water. And it will swell up with you into eternal life. So I ask you the question. I really believe God's, God's asking you this question. And he's saying, I want to know you. Get past the religion. Get past the doing. Get past the, oh, I already know Jesus. I already know everything there is to know about him. Because if I ask you many questions about the Bible, how many hands would just fly up? And say, oh, I know that answer. I know that. Salvation is an act of will. It's, it's humbling yourself before God and acknowledging yourself as having missed the mark. <clears throat> Ask him for salvation and passing from death unto life. 
It's not something we stumble into. It's, an, it's a conscious act that I believe Jesus wants everybody in here, everybody in here to have. You know, how many people in here have ever heard of George Bush, President George W. Bush? How many people in here have ever heard him say, mess up something he said? I'm sure everybody has. But anyways, the President of the United States, everybody basically knows him. If you don't know who the President is, see me after the service. We need to talk. Everybody knows who George Bush is. I could tell you a lot of things that he did just yesterday. I could tell you what a lot of people think about him. I could go read blogs about him. I could tell you the positive, the negative, the right, the wrong. I could tell you everything about him. But regardless of your view of George Bush, it doesn't matter. I got to thinking. I said, what if I went, because I know George Bush, right? I know everything there is to know about him. What if I went and knocked on the White House door and he opened the door? Why would he open the door? I don't know. But what if he opened the door and he said, who are you? I said, well, George Bush, I'm Jamie Phelps. I know everything there is to know about you. I know you're the 43rd president of the United States. I know your middle initial is W. I don't, what is it, Walker? <laughs> I know your middle name is Walker. I know what you said the other day on CNN. I heard what you said. I believe that you're the president of the United States. What if he were to look at me and say, you know what? I don't know you. I'd be like, but I know you. I've heard everything there is to know about you. But what if he said, I don't know you? He wouldn't let me in. Matthew 7, Jesus gives us a sober reminder when he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. For many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not do all this stuff in your name? We were the busiest generation we had ever been. We put out more Christian books than it had ever been produced in history. We went to more church services. We had more youth group t-shirts. We did all of this stuff in your name. And Jesus would say to him, depart from me. I never knew you. In all of the hustle and bustle, you missed the point of going to Jesus and just saying, Lord, I need you to save me. I don't even know if I fully believe everything there is to know right now, but Jesus, I know I need you right now. Something in my spirit is resonating even now as Jamie's speaking, and I know that you're speaking to my heart, and you're calling me out by name because I may be speaking to a group, but Jesus is speaking to individuals. I may be speaking to a group, but Jesus is speaking to you saying, I want to know you. That's the good news of the gospel is that there is hope. Is that there is hope. But see, you have to see why there is hope before the hope looks good. The good news of the gospel is good because I stand over here and I say, oh, God, I have sinned. Revelation strikes my heart and I say, oh, God, I have sinned. Yeah, I may, I may have come from a Christian home. Yeah, I may be a member of Heritage Church. Yeah, I may have done all these things, but still, I messed up. I broke God's holy law, and before a holy God, that, is con that condemns me. And then I look around and I say, oh, my God, I'm, I'm condemned. What in, what in the world? I get desperate. I get desperate because, you know what? If I don't find a cure to this condemnation, I could pass to the other side and be condemned forever. And then Jesus comes in, and he speaks to your heart, and he says, I died so that you could have life. I took your place. I took your sin upon my back so that you could have life. Then it becomes the good news. Then it becomes the good news. Then it's, it's, it's grounds for crying and asking God to come into your life, but then for shouting, jumping, and doing jumping jacks. Not to come in here and just sit and hear a, a warming testimony or a message or whatever, and then go home and never have encountered Jesus. I just ask you a question tonight. I believe that Jesus wants to use this idea of MySpace to get you to see that just because you know a lot about somebody, maybe that doesn't necessarily mean that you know that person. I ask you the question just one more time, and then we're going to go to something else. But do you know Jesus? Have you, is there a point where you said, you know what? I see my need for a Savior, and you cried out to Jesus. And he came and he spoke to you. Christianity is not something you stumble into. It's not something because your parents were Christians you just come into. It's something that has to be personal. It has to be personal. If I add a friend on MySpace or whatever, yeah, I may know a lot about them. But until I go to their house and introduce myself, they don't know me. 